Hi guys. Um, today we're doing Pythagorean theorem. Most of you remember this from middle school and the years before. Um, in order for us to be able to use the Pythagorean theorem to help us out, we need to have a right triangle. A right triangle is when you have a, this one 90 degree angle right there in the triangle. And uh, if we have out of the three sides, and it's a right triangle, and then the third side can be found by using the Pythagorean theorem. We only need two sides, and then we can find the hypotenuse. We're going to talk about, you know, what they're called. So um, the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the square of the legs. That means, you know, you guys remember C square equals A square plus B square. That's what that is. And then here we have the hypotenuse and the legs. And the hypotenuse is always the longest one. It's the one that is across from the 90 degree angle. It's the one that is across from the right angle. And if this is capital letter C, this is the lowercase c for the side. It's always across and the farthest out. Um, this is a leg. And this is the other leg, and we want to name this one A and this one B. And the angle is the one directly across from, is the furthest out right there. So if this one is A, this one is angle A. If this side is side B, this is angle B. Notice that it's way far away from it. Okay, that's how we name the triangle. It's just a quick review right there. Okay, so the Pythagorean theorem is the hypotenuse square is the legs square added together. So, but you might remember a square plus b square is c square. Either way, it's the same thing. It's just personal preference right there. Okay, let's get going on examples, and I think that's um, what makes a big difference when we actually see this in action. Okay, before we start solving anything, we need to label these guys. The side that is across from the hypotenuse is C. So that's the longest side. I like to highlight the hypotenuse, that way I don't get confused. And that way it's easy for me to see, hey, that's the hypotenuse right there. So hypotenuse right there. And this, this is leg and leg. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go with C squared is A squared plus B squared. I know A right there is 3. And I know B right there is 7. We're going to put this in our handy dandy calculator. And that I have 58. So, C squared is 58. That's not what it's asking. It's asking for the length of C or the length of X. So, at this point, I need to take the square root from both sides. That would get, well, C equals X, okay? Okay. So, take the square root of 58. And that will give me this guy. Let's just leave it as a decimal, two decimal places, just to be safe. So, 2.67. A little quick check. As soon as you find the hypotenuse, you check. Is this the longest side? Yes, 7.62 is bigger than 7. It's definitely bigger than 3. So there's that. That's your hypotenuse. So we did it correctly. Um, example 2, like I said, I like to highlight the hypotenuse right there. Um, you can keep the square root the way you have it, or you can go ahead and change this into a decimal from the get-go. Whatever you want to do, um, I'll just go ahead and change it, just why not? So this decimal is the same thing as 8.49, because my calculator said so. Just be careful when you're setting this up. It gave you the hypotenuse this time, and you have the two legs, A and B. Okay. So a squared plus b squared is c squared. So a squared a6 
B squared B is X, or you can just leave it as B and roll with it, whatever you want to do. Um, and then C is 8.49. So 8.49 squared. Now I'm isolating X. So 6 squared is 36. So I'm going to minus 36 on both sides. If you're one of those people that don't like to listen to what I'm saying, you will never understand where the 36 came from. So 6 squared is 36. Okay, but again, if you're not listening, you have no idea where this came from. All right? So x squared is 8.49 squared minus 36 because it's 6 squared. So that's 36.08. And we square root to give you x. So take the square root of this guy. So 6 it is. Or you can do 6.01. Either way, it's correct. So another quick check. Notice that your c, or the hypotenuse right there, is 8.49. And it's the longest side of your triangle because six, the leg, is less than the hypotenuse. Now, number three, you look at that, you look at me, and you're like, uh, this is not a triangle. Oh, uh, yeah, kind of it is. It's a triangle in disguise. So, this is your right triangle right there because if this is 90 degrees, so is this one. So, I'm going to look at this triangle. Right here, let me color the triangle for you. So this is the triangle I'm looking at. Again, I like to highlight the hypotenuse, and the hypotenuse is the side across from the 90 degree angle. It's across from the right angle. So if this side is five, this five is si five. If this whole thing is 11, this part only over here that I'm gonna make pink, so for the pink part, it's whatever the whole part. So hopefully you can see this. Okay. So this part right here is five. I'm just transferring. This is this. Okay. So this part right here is five. This whole thing right there is 11. So what number do I need here? to add five to give me 11, okay, six. Because five plus six equals 11. So I know this part right here is six. And if this one is eight, this one is also eight. Now we have our triangle, now we're ready to start solving the question, finding x. So x squared is eight squared plus six squared. So 8 squared plus C squared, oh, 100. We're solving for x, not x squared. So at this point, you go ahead and take the square root of both sides. Square root of 100, 10. Voila. And again, if this is my triangle, 8, 6, 10 right there, 10 is the longest side. Another one. So we have this triangle right here. This is hypotenuse. And if this is x, this is x, this is x. This little dash right there represents that those sides are congruent. And this is definitely a square. That's why they're congruent. Okay. So I'm going to change this into a decimal. Seven point zero seven. So don't let the little square root of two intimidate you. Change that into a decimal and just go.
So I'm looking for x. So c squared is a squared plus b squared. Notice that I go from c squared on this side, and then I change to c squared on that side. It doesn't matter how you do, you're going to end up with the same answer. It's just a matter of preference. So c squared, c is the longest side. Again, I'm glad I highlighted this, otherwise we get lost. So 7.07. .07, Square it. A squared. A is the leg, B is the leg, and they're both x because it's a square. So x squared plus x squared. Put this in the calculator. 7.07 .07 squared. Woo, you can see. So 49.99. 49.99. So one, there's an invisible one right there, invisible one right there. You combine like terms. One plus one equals two. So two x squared. All right? Divide both sides by two because you're solving for x. So here we got 24.99 equals x squared. Take the square root of both sides. So 5, because 99.9 .9 rounds up to 5. So x equals 5. Let's keep going. We have a couple more examples there. So we need to find the length of a diagonal of a rectangle with lengths 8 and with 4. So here's my rectangle. Length eight, eight with four. I'm looking for the diagonal. Diagonal is from corner to corner right there. That's the diagonal. And that's also the hypotenuse. Okay, that's why I'm highlighting that yellow. That's what it's looking for. So this is X. And I know the rectangle makes a right triangle if I cut that in half. Okay. So x squared is 8 squared plus 4 squared, because this is the hypotenuse. These are the legs. Type this in. Eighty. Again, you're solving for x, not x squared. Take the square root. So 8.94. Check to see that the diagonal is, in fact, longer than the length. And in this case, it is. So we found the right thing. Two more to go. So we need to find the length of a diagonal of a square. So I know I have a square, and by definition, the square, all four sides are congruent, and all four angles are right angles. So the perimeter of a square, of the perimeter of this square is 24. Remember when we're looking for the perimeter, the perimeter is when you add up all the sides. So in all four sides being the same, I only need to do 24 divided by 4 to get the length of the side of the, the square. So 24 divided by 4, I have 6. Therefore, all four sides of my square is 6. It's asking for the diagonal. The diagonal goes from corner to corner of that triangle. So hypotenuse right there, highlighted yellow. That's what it's asking. So x right there, and then I have the two legs, which are congruent. So x squared is both legs added together as after they've been squared. So 6 squared, 36. 6 squared, 36. Add them together, 72. Take the square root. 
And if I'm going too fast, go ahead and pause it and watch it again. Ooh, 8.49. And again, that's a good sign because I was expecting the diagonal to be definitely bigger than 6. And 8.49 is definitely bigger than 6, so we're good to go right there. So thinking process over here, it's asking for x. But this is a trapezoid, which we're going to get there. Don't worry about that right now. Um, so this is the triangle. I'm going to find everything starting from this triangle. Again, Hypotenuse right there, that's my yellow. And then I have the hypotenuse. I have one leg. Before I can do anything, I need to find this leg first. Okay, let's name it A, that way we don't get confused. So we have the hypotenuse right there, 10, square, and then square the legs right there so hypotenuse squared leg squared leg squared so before we can find x we need to find this leg right there because it's part of the triangle therefore it's part of the trapezoid so 10 square is 100 8 squared 64 plus a square minus 64 from both sides that's zero because that goes bye bye 100 minus 64 36 equals a square we're solving for a not a square so you square root both sides a equals six and just go ahead and punch that in the calculator if you don't know and that's fine you don't have to there you go we did all this work just to find this part of x. So I know this part right here is 6 because I just found it. It goes right there. So if this part is 6, this is also 6 because these two triangles are congruent. So 6 right there because I found this one. And then if this is 10, so is this part right there from here to here. Okay? The question is asking, what is X? And X is the whole thing. X goes from here all the way over to here. So from here all the way over to here, and I have this part right there in the middle. So I have this is 6, this is 10, this is 6. For me to find the whole thing, I just need to add them all up. So 6 plus 10 plus 6, that will give you 22. And 22, that's the x that you're looking for. Finally, after we do all this work, we can come up with the final answer. Okay? Um, make sure that you're often coming back and answering the question, not just like, oh, I found A, done. No, go ahead and answer the question. And uh, this is all for the notes.